is that the when the DNC server, when they claimed it was hacked by Russia, the FBI never ins- inspected their server, which was highly irregular. And in fact, James Comey said he would have liked to have their server to investigate. They didn't. They let an outside company investigate their server called CrowdStrike. So the FBI never investigated the DNC server. And there were a lot of apologists uh, who are Trump haters who said that didn't matter. They're 100,000 percent fucking wrong. Just like they were 100,000 percent wrong about Russiagate. They're 100,000 percent wrong about the DNC allowing a third party to do their investigation into uh, foreign conspiracy and espionage. They let a, a private company do all their investigating for them. And this private company was called CrowdStrike. And now, Aaron, tell me about CrowdStrike. Well, yeah, CrowdStrike is yet one more Democratic Party firm at the heart of Russiagate. So the collusion allegation, that comes from the Steele dossier that was paid for by the DNC. Uh, and it, it comes from a firm called Fusion GPS that was a DNC contractor. CrowdStrike is another DNC con- contractor, and they generated the Russian hacking allegation. And as you point out, the FBI never conducted an independent examination of the server. Uh, they just relied on CrowdStrike's reports. Uh, and when CrowdStrike even submitted some reports to the government, government recently had to admit that, that those reports were redacted. So the government itself could not even fully vet uh, CrowdStrike's information because CrowdStrike took it upon its took it upon itself to redact its own report and give it to the government, which is then used used by the government to make its case against Russia. So, so it's, 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 it's questionable. I don't know exactly what Trump is talking about here because wait, 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 he, seems to, he seems to imply that the server, that the DNC server is in Ukraine. Maybe he's saying that actually the Russian hack actually might have come from Ukraine. No, but I don't the, know. But the Ukraine, a CrowdStrike is owned by a Ukrainian oligarch, no? Uh, it's, uh, it's president is a wealthy Russian, uh, is a wealthy Russian who's very anti-Putin and the CrowdStrike has, uh, famously had an incident in Ukraine. Oh, that was it. Okay. Where they, they, they where so they accused, uh, the Russian GRU of carrying out a, a hack in Ukraine and they accused, uh, the Russian GRU of using the same malware that they accused, also accused Russia of using in the. Uh, alleged DNC hack, email hack. Now, what's interesting is they had to retract that claim about Ukraine after it emerged that they were that they that they were totally wrong, and so they had to retract their claim there. And that that then uh, then raised the question: Well, if they got it wrong here in this attribution of this GRU malware in Ukraine, are they possibly wrong as well in claiming that it happened in the DNC email theft? So maybe that's what Trump is talking about. I don't know. So Uh, I'd be curious. I'd be curious to find out. But the the critical point here, Jimmy, is that this is the first thing that Trump brings up to the Ukrainian president. And he's not asking him for help about Joe Biden. He's asking him to help with the uh, investigation into the origins of Russiagate, which is currently going on. It's overseen by Attorney General William Barr and John Durham. He's asking him for help there. And I think that is legitimate because Ukraine did play a role there. Um, There's not just this crowd strike element, but there also is the fact that Ukrainians openly bragged about intervening in 2016. Well, that, they, that, so this is a, this is majorly important. Now, I want everyone to listen to this point. In 2016, the Ukrainians bragged. What did they brag about? They bragged about meddling in the 2016 election. And in favor of who? In favor of Hillary Clinton. I'll, I'll read you a quote. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll read you a quote if I can pull it up. But I'll pull it up in one second. But yeah, so basically what happened was uh, back in 2016, you had a bunch, you had some Ukrainians who were, uh, you know, anti-corruption uh, campaigners, and uh, they were very worried about Donald Trump's presidency. So, so let me read to you, Jimmy. This is a quote from uh, the Financial Times in August 2016. And what happened that month is these Ukrainians uh, handed over this ledger, supposedly showing millions of dollars in secret payments to Paul Manafort, who was then. Trump's campaign manager. And the ledger was basically, it was handwritten notes purportedly showing that uh, Manafort was paid all this money by Yanukovych, the Ukrainian uh, president who Manafort worked for. And, but this ledger was never corroborated. It was basically just uh, handwritten 
and with with some signatures. But we never actually got concrete proof that that this money was actually paid to Manafort. Not that Manafort was not corrupt; he totally was. But we don't know whether this specific ledger was real. But this ledger uh, was was given to uh, U.S. media. It was published, and it led to Manafort's resignation uh, after a, after you know so many questions had been raised about his ties to. Ukraine. And the Ukrainians openly bragged about th that this was them meddling in the 2016 election. And, and they explained why. So the Ukrainian anti-corruption campaigner, his name was Sir Sergei Lyshenko, uh, who gave over the, over the ledger, he said this, a Trump presidency would change the pro-Ukrainian agenda in American foreign policy. For me, it was important to show not only the corruption aspect, but that Trump is a pro-Russian candidate who can break the geopolitical balance in the world, unquote. Uh, and the uh, Financial Times uh, goes on to say, if the Republican candidate, Trump, loses in November, some observers suggest Kiev's actions may have played at least a small role. So back then, you have this open acknowledgement that Ukraine was interfering, providing dirt, if you will, for the purposes of impacting the outcome of the, 20, the 2016 election. But there was no outcry then. I mean, imagine if you had Russian officials saying the exact same thing. About Hillary then. Clinton. About Hillary Clinton. It would be outrage. It would you know? be. I would be. Why are they meddling in our elections and we have to sanction them? Yeah. So this is Trump. This is Trump asking the Ukrainian president to assist with the ongoing uh, bar Durham review uh, in an effort to find out what happened there, an effort to find out whether that ledger uh, was real, for example, or whether that was actually uh, fake in the same way that the Steele dossier was fake as well. Maybe the ledger actually was real. Um, and if so, it'd be a good thing that we heard about it. But you know, for, for all this concern about accepting foreign assistance, if we apply that principle e equally, it shouldn't just stop at what we accuse Russia of doing. It should also go to what Ukrainians openly bragged about doing. So here's the, again, here's the headline from the Huffington Post. They say, I would like to, you to do us a favor though. <laughs> Uh, I will ask him to call you uh, along with the attorney general. Rudy very much knows what's happening, and he is a very capable guy. If you could speak to him, that would be great. There's a lot of talk about Biden's son, that Biden's Biden stopped the prosecution. And a lot of people want to find out about that. So whatever you can do with the attorney general would be great. So that's what they're showing. And they're saying that proves that Trump is corrupt. Of course, they leave out all they leave out all the crowd strike stuff and all that stuff that is actually very interesting. Uh, and their headline is Trump pressured Ukraine to pro Biden while discussing military aid. Uh, go ahead. Hey, Jimmy, you know what? They also leave out the fact that it's the Ukrainian president who brings up Rudy Giuliani. Yeah. And, like in that in that blacked out section, they're, they're cutting out so much. They're making it look as if it's going from Trump saying, Hey, do me a favor. It goes right to Biden. Right. But they're but they're leaving out the the crowd strike part and the that actually Trump's first request is about helping with the investigation, the Russian investigation. That's right. Then they leave out the Ukrainian president himself bringing up the fact that Rudy Giuliani called, and that's when Trump talks to him about Joe Biden. Yes. Uh, here, so here's how the this is. I want to show you how the Huffington Post is presenting this because it's kind of crazy. They go the favor Trump.